All right, guys, Butler here. Um, got a quick video for you on significant figures. This is the first part, so it's all about if you have a number, can I count the number of significant figures in that number? And then if I have a number or a calculator spits out a number, how do I round the number to the correct number of significant figures? All right, kids always ask me, well, Ms. Butler, why do we need to care about sig figs? Why does this matter? Um, it matters a lot when you're doing things in lab and you're doing calculations for a lab or for research because the sig figs, the significant figures, reflect how good your measuring device is, how precise it is. So there is a rule, and we'll talk about measuring in class, but when you measure something with a ruler, um, a thermometer, anything that's not digital, anything that you're actually measuring um, and recording, markings, graduated cylinders, things like that. You always record, you write down on your paper, all of the known digits or the certain digit digits plus one that is estimated. So for example, I'm looking at this guy here, let's use some yellow, and I see that if I want to measure the this guy's centimeters, um, the red block from here to here, right, I know for certain that it's 3.123, okay? I know it's at it's between 3.3 and 3.4 centimeters. I am certain it's between those two because I can actually touch the line for 3.3 and touch the line for 3.4. So I'm gonna record everything that's certain. I'm certain it's 3.3, but as you can see, it's a bit past 3.3. It's not exactly 3.3, and that's where we're going to put one estimated digit. So I'm going to look and estimate that that's halfway between 3.35, and I always put a unit centimeters, okay? Let's say Mr. Charvella looks at this same thing, and he's like, Butler, you're crazy. It is 3.36 centimeters because Charvella estimates the six, I estimate the five. We are both correct with our estimations because we recorded what's certain plus one estimated digit. Significant figures, sig figs, are all of the certain digits and one estimated digit. That's very important. So again, a sig fig is the number of digits that's reported, um, and it tells us the precision of an instrument. So all certain numbers, all things we know for sure, plus one estimated or uncertain digit. Those are all significant. Even that one uncertain digit is significant. So this gets into my favorite pet peeve. We have these balances at school, right? You guys put stuff, we'll measure stuff on here all year. Okay, and let's say you put a chemical on the balance and it says 2.30 grams. And homeboy next to you puts some stuff on the balance and his says 2.3 grams. Are those the same? Well, in your math class, yeah, they probably are the same, but in chemistry, they're very, very different. What's happening here is this instrument with that zero, 2.30, is more precise than this instrument here, 2.3. Because what the balance does, even though it's digital, is it puts certain digits and an estimated digit, three sig figs. This one, one certain digit, one estimated two sig figs. So when you measure something, if it ends in zero on the balance or on a, a thermometer that's digital, Always put that zero. It is a significant digit. All right, so let's say we're doing some calculations or doing some measurements. We need to be able to count the number of sig figs in that number. So here are some rules. Some of you like just hard, fast rules, things to memorize. Here you go. Non-zero integers are significant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All of those are sig figs. Okay, leading zeros are not significant. By leading zeros, I mean something like this. Those are leading zeros. Those are not significant. Trailing zeros are not significant, or excuse me, are, trailing zeros are significant if the number has a decimal point. So something like this, those trailing zeros at the end are significant because the number has a decimal point. But something like this, 2,300, those zeros are not significant. They trail the number, but there's no decimal point. And then exact numbers or definitions, counting numbers, they have infinite number of sig figs. So basically, those don't impact your calculations. Like 100 centimeters 
is equal to one meter, we don't worry, that's a definition. We don't care about sig figs for those. I'm not very, I'm personally not very good at memorizing the rules. I like little tricks to help me remember, okay? So here's, here's what I picture when I count sig figs. I picture the United States. Here we are in Denver, Parker, okay? Um, and I know the Pacific Ocean is to our west. The Atlantic Ocean is to our east. So I put Pacific and Atlantic. The P in Pacific stands for decimal present. The A for Atlantic stands for decimal absent. So here's what we're going to do. If I give you a number, I'm going to figure out if that number has a decimal point present, meaning there's a decimal point in the number, or absent, there is no decimal point. Okay. If their decimal point is present, I'm going to read the number the way we humans normally read words from left to right. Okay. I'm going to read it that way. If the number does not have a decimal point, it's absent, I'm going to read the number backwards. Okay. So I would read a, the word Atlantic like C-I-T, I'd read it in reverse. Okay. When I'm reading the number, I'm going to start counting when I hit the first non-zero. So that's when I start counting and then I count everything, including zeros until the end. All right. So let me give you some examples. Oops, hold on. There we go. All right. The number 100. First, I see that there's no decimal point. It is absent. So we know the Atlantic Ocean. I'm going to count the number this way. Um, read it backwards. And I only start counting sig figs when I hit a non-zero. So that is a zero, a zero right there. So this one, this number has one sig fig. All right, let's try this one. Look at 100 point. I know that looks a little goofy, but that decimal point is there for a reason. The decimal point is present. And so we are going to read from the Pacific Ocean to Denver. So we're going to read the number starting this way. And remember, we start counting when we hit a non-zero. Well, the first number is a non-zero, so that counts. And then we finish. Everything counts until we run out of numbers. One, two, three, sig figs. All right, this guy, I see a decimal point, so it's present. So we're going to read from the Pacific Ocean to get to Denver. And we start counting when we hit a non-zero. That's a zero, 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 zero. Those are all leading zeros. Remember, those don't count. One, two, two sig figs. And this last one, I see a decimal point present. Maybe if I can get my pen to work. So we count from the Pacific Ocean to Denver. Leading zeros don't count, right? We didn't hit a non-zero. When I hit the non-zero, we count until the number runs out. One, two, three, sig figs. There we go. Another thing you'll see a lot in chemistry is scientific notation. So I'm going to do a quick refresher on what scientific notation is, and then I'll tell you how to, how to count sig figs with these weird looking numbers. Um, basically, we use scientific notation um, when a number is really big or a number is really small. So we'll put a number out in front. That's this guy here in orange. And this number has to be between 1.0 and 9.9. .9. You're never going to see like 0.02. That's not scientific notation. And you're never going to see like 10.8. It's always going to be between 1 and 9.9. .9. So we put that number, a multiplication sign, so times or sometimes you'll see a dot, same thing. 10 and then the 10 is going to be raised to a power, an exponent. If the exponent is positive, if we have a positive, that means it's a big number. So something like, let's do... 2.2 times 10 to the second, that's a positive exponent. Really what this means is that the decimal point here is moved two spots to the right. 2,200. One, oops, that's three. Let's try that again. Two spots. <laughs> 220, right? One, two, yep. 220. These are the same numbers, just written different ways. Okay? Comes in handy when I have something like times 10 to the 23rd, right? That 220, not much of a difference time-wise, writing scientific notation um, versus full. But when you have something times 10 to the 23rd, I don't really want to deal with all of those zeros. Okay, the other possibility is we may have a negative exponent. That's not my highlighter. Let's try that again. A negative exponent means the decimal is moved 
to the, it should be moved to the left. I'm struggling with my left and rights. Let's try this. Move to the left. Positive means it's moved to the right. I guess it, basically what I'm saying is move it from this way first, depending on how you're expanding, okay? What's the important part is it's representing a big number versus representing a small number, okay? So a, a negative exponent is when we have a really small number like this, okay? So I'm going to move my decimal now to the right, what it says originally, 1, 2, 3, 2.32 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, if I want to expand this to go this way, I'm going to move my decimal point to the left, like how I kind of corrected it. Okay, so again, if I, if I lost you with my lefts and rights, um, go with negative exponent is representing a small number, something like 0 0.000 whatever, and a positive exponent is representing a large number, something with lots of zeros at the end. Okay, when we count sig figs, the nice part is we are able to... How do I get my new color? Mm -hmm. We are only going to count sig figs for this part. We don't look at the times 10 to the whatever number is there. So whatever number is out in front, that's what we're going to count for sig figs. All right, I would like you to practice counting. You can either use the rules, right? No leading zeros, trailing zeros, only count if there's a decimal point, um, non-zero integers like four, five, eight, for example, are significant. Okay, so I want you to try this, pause the video, and then you can check your answers. All right, I'm gonna put the answers in to make sure you have everything um, answered before you check. All right, check those answers. So the blue numbers are how many significant figures there are. And then I highlighted, I know it says underline, I felt like using my highlighter. I highlighted the numbers that are significant for each measurement, okay? So mark any that you got wrong, bring those as questions to class. The last thing is usually what's going to happen is you're going to do some math in your calculator, crunch some numbers, and your calculator spits out this really long decimal. Um, you're not going to write down that entire number as an answer. You're going to have to round to the correct number of sig figs. How do you know how many sig figs to round to? That's the next video, um, but we need to know how to round correctly. So here it's super easy. All you do is you're going to count from left to right the number of sig figs you need, and then you're going to look one digit past what you need and see if it should round up or down. So if that number that's one pass is between zero and four, we say you round down, but really that's just keeping the number the same. And if it's from five to nine, you round that number up. All right, so here are numbers, and I want you to pretend that these numbers got spit out by your calculator. Okay, so all of those came from your calculator, um, and your job right now is to round them to the correct number of significant digits. So let me get rid of those. So looking at the first one, 3.4567 rounded to two sig figs. So what, what's my strategy from left to right? I'm going to say one, two. Those are the two numbers that I need. We look one past and then five. So five round the number up or down. And five will round the number up. So this number now becomes 3.5. Okay. And on the three sig figs, so we ignore all these leading zeros, right? Those guys don't count. So we go... One, two, three, those are the three I care about. Which in here we have a two. Does a two round the number up or down? Right now a two rounds the number down, so it stays the same. Zero point zero zero one three four. Keep that four the same and the rest goes away. The rest up here went away. Okay. Sometimes I know this sounds silly looking at it, but sometimes kids leave out these zeros. These are just placeholders, so you still need those, right? You can't go from 0 0.0013426 to 1.346 or 0 0.0.1346. That doesn't make any sense, or 134, excuse me, right? So these are held as placeholders. I'll show you another good example in this one right here, okay? We look at this number, and we want 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one digit past that is a five. We know five rounds up. So we get 90103, okay? 
and the instinct is to leave it, right? The five rounds it up. On this example, we just chopped those numbers off. Same with this one and this one. We just chop those end numbers off. Well, what if I told you that I'm going to round because of sig figs and you have 901 and 25 or 901, 25 Yikes, $901,025, struggling, okay? And now you have $90,000. Would you be happy? No, I wouldn't be happy if I had went from almost a million dollars to less than $100,000. So really to round here, what we're looking for is when that five rounds up, we put a placeholder. Remember, if there is no decimal point present, right? If the decimal point is absent, we count from the Atlantic Ocean. So we this guy does not count. One, two, three, four, five. Still five sig figs, but the correct answer includes that trailing zero, okay? Last one here. So we got um, 129,762 rounded to three sig figs. So there's my three. And I'm going to look one pass. Does a seven round up or down? A seven rounds up. So what do we do here? Just like you would in math. That nine is going to carry over to here, right? And I'm going to put in those placeholders. Okay? I'm looking here, though. Does this number have three sig figs now? I only see two, right? Because a decimal point absent, we count this way. None of the zeros count and only those two. So what we have to do, I could put a decimal point right here, but now we're running into trouble. Now the decimal point is present, so we have to count this way from the Pacific Ocean. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's much too many sig figs. So this is a tricky one, and it's very rare, but sometimes what happens is we, we have a number like this, and we're going to have to put it in scientific notation. One, two, three, four, five. So I get 1.3 times 10 to the fifth, and then to have three sig figs, I'm actually gonna keep that first zero. Now, I have three sig figs, and it's just in scientific notation. So that's kind of a trick question, but it does happen sometimes. If you feel like you're stuck in the way you're rounded, you can't get the correct number of sig figs, sometimes the only option is to put it in scientific notation. Hopefully you feel pretty good about counting sig figs and rounding sig figs. We'll do some practice in class, but please bring any questions that you have from this video.